right, thank you for staying with Ghana's Choice 2022 right here on Citizen TV. A lot is going on as they were waiting for the Supreme Court, whether there'll be a battle there or not. Schools have reopened under dark cloud of a disputed election. Magoa says institutions will not close again in the event of a repeat presidential election. Schools are reopening today after closing for over two weeks, even as Education Cabinet Secretary George Magoa ruled out an extension to make up for lost time. There's a lot of limbo. Parents are wondering the fate of CBC. They're also wondering whether they'll, teachers are wondering whether they'll catch up with the syllabus before the exams. And helping me to deal with this is Dr. Emmanuel Manyasa, who's Executive Director, Usawa Agenda. And also education expert. Thank you so much. Thank for you for having time, me. Thank so you. how should the government balance this? First of all, there's a bit of a, then there's limbo <coughs> on both sides. Mm -hmm. The teachers are wondering how mm -hmm. do they cover the syllabus in this short mm -hmm. time that is mm -hmm. then prepare the students for the examination. The parents are wondering what is the fate of CBC? Where should the priorities for the incoming government lie at this point? <laughs> Thank you, Trevor. There, there are a lot of issues, but, but to begin with, yeah. We have children returning to school today. We have 1.3 million in primary school in class eight. We have close to 900,000 in form four who are going to sit their examinations end of this year. It is important that we plan for an extension. And, and I honestly feel an extension of this term is, is a must so that we have these children covering the content that they ought to cover in school, even if it is not for the examination. The syllabus was designed long ago. This term was only 10 weeks. Three weeks have been lost. So if you have seven weeks left, what are we telling these children? We're going to destroy a whole generation. We must allow these children to cover the content they are supposed to cover in school. So that extension must come. Uh, I don't know what the CS is thinking, but that extension must come. And, and it's good that we communicate early enough uh, with these children so that we avoid anxiety that could lead into school unrest. Uh, if the candidates feel unprepared uh, for the examinations as they approach. Then the incoming government has the immediate problem of ensuring successful transition uh, into CBC. And that successful transition is a looming crisis that has been there for a while now to do with the double intake into secondary school next year in January to create spaces, but more importantly uh, to me, to create a coherent plan because we don't have a coherent plan uh, on how we are going to implement this. Uh, we have had so many plans emerging mostly on the road. Uh, we need a coherent plan on how we are going to manage the transition. We need to say we will transition all the grade six, for example, and this is a suggestion we have made, yeah. into sub-county secondary schools, schools that are closer to their homes because these are young kids who need to commute uh, and, and study from home. And if they have to stay in school as boarders, they need to be in schools that are close home so they can be going home on Friday and returning on Monday. If we transition them to sub-county schools. We sought out a problem of shortage of accommodation in schools because our schools are congested even before the double intake. Our boarding schools are congested. So that plan is important and is urgent for the new administration. All right, but this yeah. is an interesting uh, issue that you bring up, the coherent plan, what should that look like? And yeah. transitioning them to sub county schools, but we also have delocalization happening. But we'll talk about that in just a bit. Let's cross over to Crispin Otieno, who's in Kisi right now and is joining us live. Crispin, good morning. Uh, how, are, how is the transition going on? Are the children back to school? What's happening around you? All right, we have a slight technical hitch there with the sound of Crispin Otieno. We'll cross over to him. We can see students. Uh, students are parked. Yeah. Let's listen in. 
despite the fact that they are the ones being given priority uh, at this moment, uh, uh, quite a number are yet to board various uh, tattoos for their various uh, destinations. And I just want to uh, in engage one of the uh, matatu operators here in Kisi. Ebu tuambia unaitwa nani kisha hali kwa vipi? Tunaona wanafunzi wengi ni kama wamekuwa mapema sasa hali kwaje? Hali kwa njema lakini ila ni magari ziko chache kwa wanafunzi ni wengi tunaona na gari zinaendelea kuenda lakini wanafunzi ni wengi zaidi magari zipo lakini tunangojea magari zia sikuja. Labda wakati huu hali kwaje mna mna transport iko namna gani ama mmeongeza fare ama iko sawa? Nauli tumepandisha kiasi lakini si zaidi sana. We can also talk to this gentleman over here. Jina ni nani tuambie hali kwaje we ni mzazi na unaelekea? Wako mmoja anaitwa Sebastian. Mimi ni driver ambao nafanya ruti ya Nakuru. Shida nimeona hapa ni upungufu wa magari baada ya kura iliyopigwa tumepata amani alafu shida ni upungufu wa magari wanafusi ni wengi hapa zijui shida ni nini wanaofia barabarani asa hii barabara ya Kisumu maybe wanaofia vile kulikuwa furugu bala pale maybe wanaofia lakini natarajia magari itafika hapa wanafusi ni wengi lakini naona ni iko sawa thank you so much uh, Trevor, i just also want to talk to one of the parents here uh, mami karibu uh, karibu karibu na nunga citizen uh, tunaona umebeba bag kuna mwanafunzi labda unaelekea wapi unaelekea sehemu za western ambapo wanafunzi wangu wanaenda shule ya Lugulu na humo tunaona wanafunzi ni wengi wazazi ni wengi hali sio mbaya ni mzuri lakini magari ni machache lakini tuko hapa tukisubiri tukitaraji watoto wetu kurudi shule vizuri na tunaomba kuwe na amani 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 kama kama mzazi kabla sijakuacha kama mzazi e, wakati huu tunaona kulikuwa na ta, uh, wanafunzi walifunga kwa wiki mbili e, na saa ni wanarejea labda una wasiwasi kwamba kwa wale ambao wanaenda kufanya mtihani jinsi ambavyo watarejea shule ndi matarajio yako ni yapi wakati huu wanarudi shule matarajio yangu mimi naambia walimu wetu wakatitie moyo wakafanya bidii angalau wasaidie watoto wetu na watoto wetu vile tumekaa nao hii wiki mbili nyumbani hatujaona ubaya hatujaona furugu bali tunawaombea mema ile wakufanikiwe katika mitihani yao na labda masuala yanayofunga mara na fee payment ume kila kitu iko sawa kwako mambo ya payment nayo wazazi wengi tunalalamika tunasema angalau serikali ikatuangalilie ikatupunguzie kiazi maana wazazi tumekuwa tukilipa shule watoto wanaenda wiki mbili wanarudi nyumbani angalau watupunguzie mzigo kiasi uh, thank you so much uh, Trevor that's one of the parents uh, who is uh, taking uh, her child back to school and just you can see just the way I show you the, I earlier on this is the situation uh, quite a number of students uh, here at Kisi main stage are stranded uh, but we hope uh, in the next few hours they'll be able to get to their various uh, destination and Trevor uh, uh, from here we shall uh, be uh, traversing uh, different parts of Kisi uh, town just to show you how the situation is like especially in various schools as we monitor uh, how resumption uh, of you know learning is going on of course across uh, the country uh, and also in Kisi county as well so we shall I'll again link up with you later on to show you uh, or rather talk to some of the school heads with regards to uh, how students are streaming back to school for uh, the, for the rest of the academic uh, calendar. Trevor. Crispin. Crispin, thank you so much. That's Crispin Utieno speaking to us live from Kisi there, just giving us an update of what's going on. And Dr. Manyasa, this is what we're talking about. Do you think the transition to sub-county schools, like you're saying, would sort out this issue? We can now see a congestion of parents trying to move their students from home to different schools i think that and and what i'm talking about the sub county schools is part of what i feel should be a coherent plan yeah. coherent plan in the sense that we have 1.3 children who are going to exit uh, class 8 to form 1 next year and then we're going to have 1.25 million who are going to exit grade 6 to grade 7 in junior secondary as part of a plan let us say we will transition all the 1.25 million children uh, from grade six to sub-county schools. Because the majority of our secondary schools are actually sub-county, and they are mostly day. So then we will have saved ourselves the problem of having to deal with how do we accommodate these children? Because they are 
a big number. And already our secondary schools are congested. So far, we have had classrooms built, a few of them. They are not sufficient. If we build the 10,000 classrooms we set out to build, we will have a shortage of over 6,000 come uh, end of the year. But that has not addressed the issue of dormitories, has not addressed issue of toilets in schools. And toilets are, toilets are very critical, especially for girls. Uh, they are very critical. We haven't spoken about that. So we need a coherent plan that addresses the fact that we have two point, almost six million children needing to transition to secondary school at the same time, which is January, a few months from now. And, and the fact that a new government will only be forming in, in another month or so. So that is an issue that we have to confront. The new government has to deal with, quickly have that plan in place. I hope that the new government will quickly set up the National Education Board because that, the lack of that board has created a space where the CS is the sole decision maker on education matters. And he has to make these decisions on the road that institution was envisaged by the law to be advising the government on education matters, on basic education matters. And its absence has created a very big vacuum uh, that we can feel the consequences. Okay, let me yeah. take a quick break here on Kenya's Choice 2022. We are keeping a pulse on what's going on right now. It's back to school and we've, taken, we've seen what's going on in Kisi. Parents trying to ensure that the children get space in their available peace visas. They head back to school. We'll take a pulse in the rest of the country as well. But keep it Kenya's Choice 2022. We're back in just a bit.